some speech saying, quit your job because the government will cover you. We see it as an entrepreneurial bill, a bill that says to someone, if you want to be creative and be a musician or whatever, you can leave your work, focus on your talent, your skill, your passion, your aspirations, because you will have health care. Join us for a fair and balanced debate. Erica Payne, founder of the Agenda Project, and Heather Higgins, chair of the Independent Women's Forum. All right, Erica, let me start with you. So we hear the Speaker of the House. She, by some interpretation, is saying it's okay to just quit your job. Everyone else will pay for your health care if you want to go out and do what your true passion is. So she didn't say everybody's going to pay for their health care. What she said is that you're going to be able to get health insurance if you decide to leave your employer and go pursue your dream. So I heard a great story about Hillary Swank. After she won her first Oscar, she goes to get a prescription filled and her health insurance is turned down. So she's got an Oscar in one hand and can't afford her prescription drugs in the other hand because her insurance had been denied because she didn't make enough yeah, money. But who's going to pay for it, Heather? But, I mean, if it really is the question. This there's so many things that are wrong with Nancy Pelosi's statement that make you worry about the future of the country because not only has she no clue what an entrepreneur is or does, but the entire premise of this is somebody else will pay for your costs. Mm -hmm. And these are the we were sold this bill on the idea that we were going to cover the uninsured uh, and. That has to be done by people who work. Government isn't Santa Claus. The money has to come from somewhere. And the problem with the welfare state is it sounds so nice. We're going to give you all these goodies. The problem is, is that we've moved from a culture of generational saving to a culture of generational theft. Mm -hmm. Future generations but, are going to be paying for you to not pay for your own health care. But, but, but with all due respect, is it not the case, Erica, that, that people who do not work for companies pay really, really high health insurance costs? So many yes. times people cannot afford to not work for a company if they want to pursue their dreams. That's exactly right. And it's important to remember that 64% of jobs in the last 15 years have been created by small businesses. And so if you want people to take that entrepreneurial spirit and go out there and start new businesses, whether they're an artist like a Hillary Swank who is, you know, for all intents and purposes, a one-person company, or somebody who wants to start a restaurant or somebody who wants to start a dry cleaning service, they can't make that move for making, you know, eight bucks an hour so, working for so somebody working. Healthcare for those have been homes. more affordable for the contract employee, the yeah. sole person. If healthcare had become more um, more cost effective, then maybe we wouldn't be in this situation. Oh, exactly. I mean, one of the things everybody agreed that healthcare needed reform. The question is, how do you do it? Do you make the market able to function where you are actually do you have portability in healthcare, where the individual can buy healthcare as easily as somebody who does it through their employer? The the system is very rigged and very distorted at this point, and that was the problem. But moving to the government paying for it is a radically different model that winds up not solving. The so problem. just to be clear, the government is actually not paying for health in insurance. In in this case, what they're doing is they're no, the saying are. They're, no, they're decoupling in employment from health insurance. So you can now buy into exchanges, but the people still have to pay for it. Let's be really clear. The people are still going to pay for their health insurance. This is not the government paying well, for their well, health insurance. Well, high, high income earners are going to be paying a heck of a lot. Well, so. high income earners are going to pay, be paying a heck of a lot more. That That is factual. Let me move on to this. Not if you next, go on Medicaid. Let, let, let me go on to the next thing because Newt Gingrich uh, had some, some very strong statements about the Supreme Court nominee Elena Kagan, listen to this. All you have to know about the president's nomination of Elena Kagan is that she, as dean of the Harvard Law School, took an effort to block the American military from the Harvard campus all the way to the Supreme Court during a war, and that is an act so unbecoming an American that she should be disqualified from the very beginning. Do you agree with that, Erica? Look who's running for president in 2012. You know, Newt Gingrich has made just a completely inaccurate statement. It was a 25-year ban against any employer who discriminated on campus. That was a ban that she was upholding. And so I can't think of anything more pro-American than being pro-civil rights so and pro-military. She, she was entirely, she tried to take a, a decision 
absolutely did not apply in any way, shape, or form to Harvard. And it was a decision that was slapped down eight to zero. They couldn't get one Supreme Court justice to take the position that she was taking. The Solomon Amendment was very clear. If you want federal money, you need to let the military recruit on campus. They tried to distort this into saying it was okay. equal should, time. Should it was it disqualify not. her as a Supreme Court? Yes, Supreme well, because, yes, no, no. yes, because it's being on the Supreme Court is about your judgment. And her judgment clearly was deeply flawed. Her judgment was to uphold when a lower court found that law unconstitutional. No, it was a, it was a, her decision it was, a, it was, a, it was a to uphold did not the ban when Harvard. the lower it did court not found it unconstitutional. I've got to leave it there, but I love the uh, lively debate. Erica Payne, Heather Higgins, thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thanks Brian. a lot. Steve? All right. Thank you very much, Gretch. Straight ahead, Arizona Governor Jan Brewer, not too happy with the president's...